Good evening, Heritage of Faith family. I'm so glad that you tuned in tonight, and I believe our time together is going to be amazing. I believe that God is going to do something supernatural just via this uh, short video Bible study on, on this Wednesday night. Uh, Annette and I want to tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate you. We're praying for you, um, praying that you're you're warm and, and that you're safe. If you need anything, make sure you reach out to us uh, as a church family, and we'd love to be able to connect with you if you're in, have any sort of needs going on. So anyway, so glad you joined in. It, also, if you have kids, preteens, and or youth, you can, uh, for kids and preteens, you can connect with them on the um, on their PCO, on their forums, and there's some links, and there's uh, short videos you'll be able to watch that they'd like to share as well with your young people. Also, if you're a youth, you can tech connect with them on Instagram. Amen. So anyway, so glad to, to share my heart with you. And as I woke up this morning and just praying over tonight and what the best thing for us as a church to do tonight, and we figured, you know, hey, not knowing exactly what the weather's going to do, hey, let's go ahead and, and just send out a video to encourage our church family. So I'm glad that you're with us tonight. So um, as I woke up this morning and just seeking the Lord over um, tonight um, and, and what was the, what I needed to share with you, I was just reminded of some things that uh, the Lord had me minister on Sunday morning. And it was a statement that I said, and, and it's this. It says, our greatest victories and greatest defeats come down to what we're submitted to. Our greatest victories and our greatest defeats come down to what we're submitted to. We talked about following Jesus as our example. Jesus was submitted to the Father. And because of that, he fulfilled his purpose. Because of that, he was able to walk through the, the crowd of the angry mob, not even touched. He, he was able to multiply fish and loaves. He was able to heal the sick, raise the dead. He was able to do extraordinary things because of what and who he was submitted to. You know, people recognized that Jesus was a man under authority. And I believe people in our lives will recognize that we are people under authority. You know, uh, Jesus was an amazing leader, but he didn't do it apart from being submitted to the Father. Even the, the centurion, a Roman centurion, in Matthew chapter 8, it says, he says, I, I've seen this of you, or I know this about you, that you are a man just like me under authority. I tell, I tell one go and he goes. I tell another one come and he comes. He goes, I've seen the same thing with you. You're a man under authority. But because of that, he recognized because he was under authority, he recognized he also was a man who had authority. Even other people that, that looked at the life of Jesus, they were like, man, no one can do the things that this man does unless the Father is with them, unless God is with them. So people recognized that Jesus was a man under authority. And it was because of that, they could be aware that he was a man that had authority and was in authority. So I want to talk about this for a few minutes here in, in, um, in Proverbs chapter uh, 1, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. It says this, he goes, my son, hear the instructions of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. You see here, it says, my son, hear the instructions of a father. If, if, if you're a, a son and he's saying, hear the instructions of your father, meaning that's going to be a position that I have to put myself in a position in a place to hear. And it says, don't forsake the law of your mother, meaning, meaning don't let these things go. Stay submitted to the law. Stay submitted to the word. And it says, for they will be graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. You know, thinking about this, this grace of ornament, this, this, um, this graceful ornament on your head, this, this chain about your neck. And there's a couple of things I wrote concerning this. And it says that is, if I'm one that is a son that is submitted to the instructions of a father, I'm not letting go of the instructions of a mother, 
then it says that this graceful ornament, and I wrote this down, it will make you distinguished. Meaning as you go through life, that this ability to, uh, to follow the instructions, to hold to the instructions, to be submitted to the, the instructions, it will make you distinguished. Also, it's this graceful ornament. It's something that people will recognize. You, not only are you distinguished, but it's favor. This graceful ornament and this graceful favor is going to mark your life. Thank you, Father. And so, so you're surrounded with this favor, but all this is going to come to pass when you're hearing the instructions, when you are not forsaking the instructions. This means you're keeping yourself in a place of submission to the word. And as I do that, people are going to recognize, you know, um, this favor on my life. And I believe that's what they were doing with Jesus. They were recognized. There's something different about him. There's something distinguished about him. It all comes down to this aspect of this, hey, he's submitted, he's holding to, he's not letting go of, and therefore it was marking his life with favor. In Proverbs chapter 3, <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 21 says, my son, let them not depart from your eyes. Talking about wisdom, talking about the word, talking about the law. My son, let them not depart from your eyes, but keep sound wisdom and discretion. So all these are words, keep. All these words like keep, not letting the depart. These are words of submission. And what, does it hap what happens? It says, they will be life to your soul, grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you'll not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. Why? For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. So here, when I'm keeping the word, when I'm submitted to the word, this is why Jesus was successful because he was submitted to the Father. He was submitted to the Father's word. And it was when we do those things, we're going to see, hey, our, that they will be life to your soul, grace to your neck. You'll walk safely in your way. Your foot won't stumble. Uh, you, when you lie down, you'll not be afraid. You'll lie down and your sleep will be sweet. So hear this. When we're submitted to the word of God, all these things will accompany our life. And it, it closes with this. It says, for the Lord will be your confidence. You see, when you are a man or a woman under authority, now you're going to have confidence. You're going to be now a person that's not just under authority, you're, but you're going to be a person that is walking in authority. Let's look at Psalms 1. Psalms 1. And this all deals with being submitted to the word, being submitted to God's word, because it's in that that we're going to be distinguished. It's in that we're going to have confidence. Now in Psalms 1, and this is one of my favorite verses concerning the word, set of scriptures concerning the word. And in Psalms 1, it says, blessed is the man. So blessed is the man, blessed prospers the man, graced is the man, anointed is the man, strong is the man, prosperous is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So it's these word walks, stands, and sits. These are all words of submission. Where are you walking? Where are you standing? And where are you sitting? These are all words of submission. So it's saying, blessed is the man that doesn't walk here. Blessed is the man that doesn't stand here. And blessed is the man that doesn't sit here. So it's where I'm standing, sitting, and walking that what I'm submitted to, that's going to determine either victories or success, victories or defeat in my life. It says what? But his delight. Whose delight? The blessed man. So what is the blessed man? Where is he standing? Where is he sitting? Where he's walking? You're going to be standing, walking, and sitting somewhere. The question is, will it be submitted to God's word or will it be submitted to the world around you? Will it be coming under what uh, the, the work of the Holy Spirit or coming under um, being conformed to this world? So blessed is the man 
who delights in what? The law of the Lord. Blessed is the man who's delighting, take pleasuring, pleasure in, who is submitted to the word. Blessed is the man who submitted to the law of God. And it says in his law, he meditates day and night. It's in his word, I'm meditating, I'm submitted to it, I'm following it, I'm letting it direct my path, I'm letting it guide my steps because this is the blessed man. The blessed man is submitted to the word. And what does it say? It says, he shall be, he, the blessed man. Who's he? The one that's submitted to the word, that's delighting in the word. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, who leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So the man that is submitted to the word is the man that's going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers. It's going to be like a man that is, it is bringing forth fruit and he is going to prosper. So the submitted man to the word, the submitted man that's delighting in the word, he will prosper. And I guarantee as a body of believers, as we submit to the word, as we submit to the work of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, your life is going to prosper. And the next verse says this, the ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away. So we can either be like the submitted or we can be like the unsubmitted. We could say it this way, the unsubmitted are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the unsubmitted shall not stand in the judgment, nor the unsubmitted in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. You could say it this way, the Lord knows is intimate with the way of the submitted. Hallelujah. So it's being submitted to the word that our lives will change. It's being submitted to the plan of God, the word of God, submitted to the work of the Holy Spirit. And my last verse for us tonight is in 1 Peter. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse five, it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse six says, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The greatest thing you can do in the midst of anxiety, the greatest thing that you can do in the midst of adversity is cast all your care upon him. You see, it's our casting our care upon him is an act of submission. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You see, it's in our submission to our Father God, to his word, to his plan, to his purpose, that will cause his hand to lift you up above any and all of your circumstances or situations. I'm telling you, you are a church family that's full of faith. You're thriving, you're victorious, you're increasing, you're going to the next level, you're going to the maximum. Why? Because as a church family, we're coming to a place where we are bringing ourselves under the word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, and his purpose for our lives. Amen. Amen. Hey, God's got a plan for your life, but I want to encourage you. Hey, let's, let's, let's be submitted to the Father. Let's be submitted to the Word because, because it's what we're submitted to that will bring about our greatest successes or our greatest defeats. Amen. I'm so glad that you joined us tonight. I believe that you're winning in life. I believe that you're growing and you're increasing. And, and um, you know, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our church family. I thank you for everyone that's uh, listening tonight, that's tuning in, whether it's via SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, whatever it might be. I, and I, I just thank you, Lord, that you will show them areas of their life where they can bring themselves under your hand. Lord, I thank you for your plan, your work being fulfilled in their lives. I thank you, Lord, that they are ones that are delighting in your word. And I thank you, Lord, that as they're delighting in, the, in your word, 
I thank you that you are causing them to increase more and more every area of their life. Lord, I speak strength in their bodies. I, I thank you, Lord, where there, where there is sickness. I thank you for the healing power of God to come upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Where they are weak, I thank you that strength is in, uh, invading their body. I thank you where they're confused. I thank you, Lord, that wisdom is entering into their situation. I thank you, Lord, that great grace is upon their life. And I thank you that you're causing them to be strong in you in the power of your might. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to know Annette and I love you. Um, can't wait for Sunday morning to con continue to share with you about going to another level. Also, uh, don't forget for all the men tomorrow night at seven o'clock in the youth building, we'll have a men's meeting. Uh, just, uh, just we'll continue to monitor the weather. But as right now, we're still going to uh, go to the next level of men. Also, going to the next level as men. Also, uh, don't forget mobile outreach this Saturday. Uh, morning, you can go on to the um, the events page and find out more information about that. If you, we'd love for you to be involved in that. Also, victorious adults that's fifty five ages and older. They'll be meeting at eleven o'clock. You can register online for that, um, so they know how many to be expecting. And also, if you're new to Heritage, this coming Sunday evening, four o'clock. I'd love to have a meal with you. Annette and I'd love to share our hearts with you, and uh, to give you an opportunity to be connected. Uh, to Heritage of Faith, and uh, so you can be a part of what God's doing, and so you can help us fulfill uh, the mandate upon Heritage of Faith. Other than that, we love you all and praying for you. Uh, remember to continue to pray for Dr. Savell, Eric, Joe McCroskey as they're uh, in Africa, and I um, believe we're going to hear some great reports about their trip. Other than that, we love you. God bless. Have a great evening, and go give them Jesus.